What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So one of the things with the SketchUp Essentials is that the extension that I cover every week is selected by my supporters on Patreon. So I give you a series of extensions, you guys vote, and then I cover the extension that you guys asked for me to cover. So this week, the extension that my, that my supporters on Patreon have chosen is JHS Power Bar. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this week's extension is called JHS Power Bar. It's a free extension extension that you can download from the Sketchication plugin store. I'll link to that in the notes below, but it's unique in that it's actually a collection of powerful extensions from other developers like Tig and TomTom, Tom, Rick Wilson, Christine Enneroth, and more. And uh, it's all it's all put together by the developer Cadfather. And there's actually a fairly ridiculous number of tools in this extension, and so uh, I tried to go through all of them just to give you kind of an idea what each one of them does. But if you have any questions, leave a comment below, and we can talk about we can talk about them a little more in depth, or I can make a follow-up video. I tried to give this extension the best overview I could possibly give it. So the first two that are included in here, the first three are the AMS Smooth Tools, the Smooths Tools, and the Soften to Quadrants Tools all of which are used for softening and unsoftening hidden geometry. I'm particularly intrigued by Smooth to Quadrants due to its ability to take faces back to quad geometry. This tool also includes Upright Extruder by Julia Christina Inneroth. I've talked about this one before. It allows you to extrude a face while still keeping it upright. Face Finder is an extension that allows you to fill in faces on coplanar edges for a selected set of geometry. This extension is great because it works on both grouped and ungrouped geometry, and it basically fills in any holes that you have in your geometry. Offset Edge allows you to offset a single edge in SketchUp, which you can't do in a base installation. In a base installation, you have to select multiple edges. This will allow you to offset a single edge. Extrude Edges by Vector allows you to extrude an individual line into a 3D shape without having to give it any kind of thickness and use the push-pull tool. Extrude Along Path appears to extrude a rectangular shape along a path you select. I'm not 100% sure how this is different than using the Follow Me tool in a shape you draw, so if you know, leave a comment below and let me know. Pipe Along Path draws a pipe along a continuous path. This allows for smooth creation of continuous pipe shapes. Lines to Tubes generates a series of tubes along all selected lines. This is great for creating tubes along non-continuous lines, as Pipe Along Path only works along a single connected path. Copy Along Path will make copies of a component along a path with a distance set by the user. A line on red blue or green is useful because it can take a series of objects and align them on the same axis. So if I take these objects, select a line along blue, they all get moved to the same vertical height. Drop at intersections allows you to drop a series of objects straight down until they intersect with geometry below. This can be especially useful for adding trees or landscaping to complex faces, like sandbox surfaces. Mirror allows you to create copies of an object mirrored across three points that you set. Super Weld allows you to take a series of curves and weld them together in a single line. Explode Curves does the exact opposite, exploding all the selected curves into their individual segments. Then Equalize Segments on Curves allows you to adjust curves so they have a set number of segments or a set length for each segment. JS Mover allows you to move objects using just the arrow keys on your keyboard. The Align tool allows you to take an object, define the axes of the object, then input a new set of axes to align the object along. The 3D Rotate tool allows you to select an object and rotate it towards another object using several clicks. Quite honestly, I'm not 100% sure where I would use this tool, so again, if you have some ideas, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Much like the JS Mover tool, the Rotix tool allows you to rotate objects 
using just your keyboard. Random scale applies a random scaling factor to the currently selected objects. This could be another good extension for tree or landscape modeling. Random rotate applies a random rotation factor to the objects. And random rotate and scale applies both a random rotation and a random scale to selected objects. You can adjust the settings for these using the Alt key. Proxify components replaces components with a simple proxy component, allowing your model to run faster. This is especially useful for, for geometry heavy objects like 3D trees or other things that are going to slow your model down. Compo Swapper allows you to quickly swap out components for other components. FFD creates a control cage that allows you to modify and deform your objects to create new shapes. Subdivide by face and subdivide by cell size allow you to divide geometry into smaller parts in your models. Split up will divide your rectangular faces into square grids. C points at vertex generates control points at every vertex in your model, or every point where lines intersect in your model. This works well with the two final tools. Connect C points with line will draw a line through any series of guide points you select. And then finally, and this is probably the one that I'm the most interested in, is C points and place components will place a component that you select at every guide point you select, allowing for very interesting geometry development. That's where I'm going to wrap up this extension overview. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you have questions about any of the tools uh, included in this extension? Um, do you have some ideas for, for what you could do with some of this stuff? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.